You can get easy emeralds and amazing items from villagers in Minecraft with these 20 villager trades you didn't know, so learn about these secret trades right now. So for the first amazing villager trade that you didn't know about, we have a trade that rarely will come from the armorer, and that is the ability to buy shields. Now this trade costs 5 emeralds, but as you can see it's often discounted really quickly. Now comparing this to crafting the shields ourselves, of course to make a shield you're going to need 6 planks of wood and as well as that a singular piece of iron and so we're gaining one piece of iron and a bit of wood with this obviously although that doesn't seem like the best deal having a way to get iron items through emeralds is really important because of course every trade can be discounted so we can really think of this as costing one emerald for a shield we can then actually convert one emerald into one iron although of course we're turning this into shields shields are used pretty quickly and also a lot of players won't enchant their shields so they're a fairly consumable item the next trade comes from the cartographer villager. Now if we go through every single trade that the cartographer has and eventually level it up to a master cartographer, you will unlock this final trade which is for a banner pattern. This is a trade you really only have to do one or two times, and that's because by unlocking this banner pattern it's never consumed when it's used, and so because of that we've basically just unlocked a template that can be used forever. And I'll show you why I think this trade is such a good one that's often overlooked. So this pattern has a very specific shape to it, and it's something we can use with a lot of different designs. That pattern is the Lime Globe. Now you can notice here we can put it on a blue banner, and of course with the green globe on there, we can sort of see what would be like South America, North America, and Africa there, with maybe Antarctica at the bottom. Of course very roughly resembling the world map, and I think it's such a cool piece of lore that you buy this from the cartographer villager. I'm sure we've all been in that situation in Minecraft, where you have enough blaze rods to go to the end, but you only have a couple ender pearls, because generally it's easier to get a ton of blaze rods early on, than it is a ton of ender pearls, but there's a great villager trade that will completely solve this issue. That comes from the Cleric. As one of its later trades, we have 5 emeralds for an ender pearl, and although this is a little bit pricey, it's actually one of the only guaranteed sources of ender pearls in the entire game. Without the dangerous need to let's say go into the warped forest, or even try and find a warped forest, here we can get 12 ender pearls in one go, and should definitely be able to give us enough to go to the end. And with one restock, we'll have enough to also find the end fortress. So of course with the ender pearls and the blaze rods, we can turn those into the powder, mix that with the ender pearls and throw our eyes of ender to go find ourselves wherever that stronghold is. Some villager trades are decent, you trade for them and you get what you want in the end, but some of them are absolutely fantastic. And that's where we get to this trade from the fisherman. As its starting trade, so you don't have to trade with this at all to unlock it, we have the bucket of cod for three emeralds. You might be wondering why is a cod so important, but it's that the cod is not the important part of this at all. Actually it's the fact that once we get rid of the cod, we still have the bucket. So really this is a trade to get ourselves three iron in the form of a bucket for emeralds. And of course with this counts, this becomes one emerald for three iron, which is an exponentially good trade trade, because not only are tons of buckets really really necessary, you can even see that right here being in the snowy biome, we have a ton of powdered snow that we can spam pick up like this with all of our buckets. We're about to continue on to a bunch more amazing villager trades, but before we do that feel free to comment below, what villager trades do you think are the most amazing? Although there's not much farmland in the desert, farmer villagers do tend to be the villager in Minecraft that people trade with the most, and as one of the trades that's often over overlooked in this villager is the one emerald for four apple trade. This may actually be the best trade that the farmer villager has to offer, and I'll tell you why. There's no real way to farm apples inside of Minecraft, and of course yes they do drop from oak leaves decaying and also dark oak leaves decaying, but the chance of that is quite small, and so even from a very large tree farm or from let's say chopping down an entire oak forest, you're not going to get more than maybe five or ten apples, and so if you want a bunch of gold golden apples, the only way you're going to be able to get that is by finding a better source of the apple item. And of course, that's where this trade from the farmer comes in. But we are not done with the farmer villager yet. That's because the farmer villager has another trade that also relates to villager trading and setting up villager systems that we definitely need access to. In fact, it's the item that the villager has in its hand right now. The six bread for one emerald trade. This trade is fantastic, not only being able to get a ton of items from one emerald, 
emerald, but also one piece of bread does cost three wheat, which means that we're getting 18 wheat, basically, from one emerald. Now, of course, we cannot craft bread back into wheat. What we can do is we can take this bread and use it to breed villagers. Why? Well, of every single food that villagers use, bread is the one that they like the most. And so because of that, if you give two different villagers bread, they're going to be able to much more efficiently and productively breed than they are with standard food sources, like for example, potatoes or carrots. As I mentioned earlier, we can buy buckets of cod from the fishermen. We can also sell them cod in the raw cod form. Now this may not seem like a good trade, but it is incredibly overpowered, and I'll explain why. It's really from one thing, that is AFK fish farms. Now a lot of players use AFK fish farms, and this is a way of basically having the game automatically fish for you. But the amazing thing is, you'll notice, we just unlocked another trade, and that is raw salmon for emerald, not just raw cod. And again, we unlock another trade after that, that is six tropical fish for an emerald. And once again, we have four puffer fish for an emerald. What do all of these trades mean? Well, it basically means that after you've AFK fished for multiple hours or multiple days, you can then just go to the fisherman villagers, have a way of getting an entire stack of emeralds from one villager with just the items in your inventory. I don't know, but you, but I find bricks in Minecraft to be a really beautiful block, one that's definitely very old and traditional, and also can be used in its wall form for a lot of different interesting builds. The problem with it is that by finding clay, breaking the clay, and smelting each piece of it individually, we're getting to the issue that an incredibly large amount of fuel is needed to turn all of those pieces of clay into bricks. However, there is a villager trade that completely solves this issue for us. You'll notice that with the stone mason on its first trade, we have one emerald turning into 10 bricks. Now this one item to 10 item trade not only is amazing, but it's also kind of meant to be paired with turning 10 clay balls into an emerald, but the great news is it doesn't have to. You can use super, super easy trades to get yourself emeralds, and then convert that into a really easy source of bricks. The best trades from the cleric are primarily those where you're buying items from them. But there's also a trade that if you have a gold farm is actually a really great source of emeralds, and that is three gold ingots for an emerald. I'm sure a lot of you are going to say that that's a terrible deal, but it actually isn't. If this villager is zombified just once, we have one gold ingot to one emerald. And if you have an incredibly overpowered gold farm, having a ton of gold be turned into emeralds is not a bad deal at all, especially considering the fact that what I often do once I have a gold farm in Minecraft is store that gold in block form and having this compact ability of this item means that you can go around and basically just have one stack of items that you turn into nine stacks of emeralds, which then of course gives you a huge source of emeralds in the game, and you can use this source of emeralds to buy items from the cleric or from other villagers around. As another trade that is not the best to start off with, but if you have a good farm is made really really useful, that is the string for emerald trade. Now there are two villagers that offer that, there's the fisher which starts at 20 string for an emerald. However, as an even better deal, the Fletcher will give us one emerald for only 14 string, which is six string cheaper. Of course, the reason why this trade is good is that you get a massive amount of spider eyes as well as string from any kinds of spider farms, or if you have an all-around general mob grinder, you also get a ton of string and spider eyes from that. And so with these excess items, you can convert these into emeralds fairly early on. If you have the zombified down to one string for one emerald, I would definitely recommend this trade as a good way of getting yourself emeralds from some unconventional items you may have. A really important resource I always try and keep in my ender chest is blocks of emerald, and that's because if I run into any random wandering traders, then I can actually have access to their trades, as of course all of their trades are buying trades and not selling trades. And let's take a look at a specific trade that the wandering trader usually has to offer, which I think is quite good. Of course some of these trades aren't very good at all, but this one is different, it is coral blocks for emeralds. Coral blocks are not renewable at all, except if you trade for them. Now what does that mean? It means that there's a limited number of coral blocks in the world, except through one way, and that's by getting them from the wandering trader. And so if you want to build with coral 
coral blocks, but you just have a very small coral reef and you don't want to destroy it, or let's say that you cannot find a coral reef, this is your perfect trade for that. Usually when people are trading with armorers, they're just trying to spam through as many trades as possible to eventually get to the coveted diamond armor trades. However, on our way to that trade, probably one of the most overlooked trades in the entire game, is the ability to buy chainmail armor from the armorer villager. You might be wondering why in the world is this a good trade at all? And obviously in some ways it's not the best, but I'll tell you why I think this trade is actually pretty exceptional. It's the fact that chainmail armor is a very difficult to get item, and cosmetically it looks pretty good. And also the chainmail armor works great with the armor trims coming to Minecraft 1.20. And so if you want a source of chainmail armor that isn't almost completely destroyed, that does not also necessarily come from zombies, we can get a source of every single piece of chainmail armor if you're lucky, with enough armor villagers. Being one of Minecraft's favorite light sources, we have the lantern, and you can get this from the library. Most people just trade with the librarian for its book trades, but you may as well as a secondary use get this one emerald for one lantern trade. And so you can see here most of these librarians do have the trade, and with this we have an amazing source of this hanging light item, which not only has the beautiful section of chain on it, which eventually is what made the chain item be added to the game, but of course also this light source is great in the fact that it does work underwater as well, and so we can place these lanterns underwater lighting things up without the need for let's say a sea lantern, and an amazing light source either above the water or below it. Also as a completely random side note, I literally just discovered a bug that apparently if you have a lantern on top of a bell, you cannot actually see the underneath texture of that lantern. So I guess maybe don't have any of the lanterns that you trade for on top of bells, but of course outside of this the lantern itself is a beautiful item. We're not quite done with our librarian yet though, because some librarians have this trade, that is five ink sacks for an emerald. Early game, this trade is absolutely a fantastic source of emeralds, because of course squids are really prolific, and getting yourself a large number of ink sacks from squids should prove to be no problem at all, since basically every ocean is full of them and every river has even more than that. By literally just bonking a couple squids, we already have 30 ink sacks. And using these ink sacks, even without any discounts, only 5 of them will turn into an emerald, but of course with discounts we're talking only 1 ink sack for an emerald. Also, even late game this can be decent, because not only could you get super lucky and by getting XP from this trade unlock more enchanted books, like let's say getting very lucky with the fact that we just completely randomly here unlocked a mending book trade, but of course in reality there is the fact too that if you have a guardian farm with the guardian prismarine farm, oftentimes what you'll get is a ton of ink sacks there also. One of my favorite things to build with in Minecraft is quartz blocks, but it can be actually fairly difficult to get a large number of these items in the game, as of course quartz is fairly common, but it takes four quartz to make one quartz block. However, this is where the Master Mason comes in. As its final trade, we have two things, that is quartz blocks for emerald and quartz pillar for emerald. Now both these trades have a trade limit of 12, and every single mason has this as its final trades. And because there's two trades for this, this means that for every single mason restock, we can get at 24 quartz blocks of either the quartz pillar or the block of quartz type. And I've found when building with quartz, I tend to use an almost equal number of both these items, and so because of that I can build absolutely beautiful things out of quartz without ever having to risk my life going into the nether, and even if I do get some quartz from the nether, of course with a large number of masons, this trade is a better way of getting quartz than that anyway. Iron golems of course give us access in Minecraft to huge amounts of iron if they're utilized correctly and an iron golem farm. And that's where we get down to this trade that the armor, the weaponsmith, as well as the toolsmith give to us, and that is four iron for one emerald. And obviously with one zombification we get this down to one iron for one emerald, and basically it's a way of converting iron into other material types. So for example with other trades we can turn iron into redstone, we can turn iron into emerald, and we can turn iron into lapis, and of course
course, we can turn iron into really anything we want that's unlocked by emeralds. Although generally, with a lot of the trades that I point out, I'll talk about ways that we can turn emeralds into iron, not the opposite of iron into emeralds. If you do happen to have an incredibly efficient iron golem farm, these trades could be the ones for you to get yourself a good source of emeralds. A very big part of setting up a healthy village in Minecraft is getting it a high occupancy. What that means is getting a ton of beds in it so that villagers can breed to have one villager for every bed. And although beds are not a necessarily difficult thing to get in Minecraft, it can still be frustrating to try and find the items for let's say beds in maybe a biome like this desert where there really isn't any good source of wool. However, that's where the Shepherd Villager comes in. As you can see here, we unlock these phenomenal trades, where we basically have a couple emeralds for a bed. And you can even trade up to 12 beds per restock. And so if, for instance, this villager right here, with red and yellow beds that it's selling, we can get 24 beds from just one restock. And with all these beds, we can of course place them around the village in neat houses, or we can just place them all down in a big field pattern like this. Whatever you end up deciding to do, this is really a great way of getting yourself a good source of beds inside of the game. The Mason offers us one emerald in exchange for glazed terracotta. Now glazed terracotta probably doesn't seem like an amazing deal, but I'll tell you why I think it is. The full path to getting glazed terracotta is to turn dirt into mud, then to turn mud into clay, then to smelt a clay block into a terracotta block, then to turn that terracotta block into dyed terracotta, and to smelt that dyed terracotta into the glazed terracotta. Now of course, Generally, most people are just going to go to a mesa biome and dig up some standard terracotta or dyed terracotta, then dye that perhaps, and of course smelt it into the glazed terracotta. But either way, there's still a lot of steps involved for this, whereas you can cut out all of those steps by trading with the mason villager. And so if you happen to have a very large number of emeralds and are not really sure what to spend them on, maybe you could spend them on glazed terracotta. Some trades in Minecraft are only good depending on what biome you're in, and this is one of those. Those. If you happen to be next to a stony peaks biome or just a very large mountain with lots of exposed stone on it, you likely have a source of nearly infinite coal, as there is a ton of coal that generates all across the stony peaks biome, and really at almost any high up Y level across the entire Minecraft world. And with the fortune pickaxe, you can get a lot of it. Now there are three villagers that use coal as an upgrade trade, and this is why coal can be such a useful item. It is 15 coal for one emerald from the toolsmith, also from the weaponsmith, and even from the armor. All three of these villagers will usually have this trade, and it's a really great way of upgrading these villagers to higher up levels, getting yourself the diamond armor trades. Now obviously this trade is not just useful for upgrading villagers, it can even just be a decent source of emeralds earlier on. Maps in Minecraft are so useful, and you really cannot get yourself too many of them. The only problem is, is to actually craft maps, we need a ton of sugarcane, a ton of iron, as well as a decently large amount of redstone. And so, for example, to craft even one map in Minecraft, we're talking about the need for 8 paper, 4 iron, and 1 redstone. But instead of having to waste all these valuable resources on maps, why not just trade with the cartographer villager? Yes, the trade is a little expensive, being seven emeralds for one empty map, but later on if you zombify it a bit, you can get yourself a very excellent source of the empty maps from this villager. And of course with the ability to copy maps, scale maps, and of course lock maps, getting yourself a ton of different maps in Minecraft really is vital to having a fully complete Minecraft survival world, being not only useful to find your ways to different locations, but also if you have enough maps, making a mega map really is an awesome goal to have. Anyway, those are 20 amazing villager trades in Minecraft you didn't know about. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe to see more content like this, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye!